Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. We are deep in the heart of Texas today in Dallas, a market that has been phenomenal for real estate investors in the last decade. But is the tide starting to turn? Today, we'll find out what's happening in this great market and discuss alternative investments to help you find better yield on the Real Estate Guys radio program. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms, with me as usual, financial strategist and co-host, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. We are deep in the heart of Texas. We are. Yeehaw, one of our favorite places to come and visit. A lot going on in Texas. And, you know, it's always good to come here because it always seems like it's just a vibrant economy. You know, we have such a long history in this marketplace, and it's been really interesting to see. In a lot of ways, Dallas, Fort Worth, Metro is the poster child, kind of like, you know, when Christ was born and the calendar went from before Christ to after. Uh, I almost feel like Dallas-Fort Worth marked the change in the way the world worked in terms of real estate. And before that, Dallas-Fort Worth was like one of the most boring, slow equity growth, cash flow markets you'd ever want to see. And it really hadn't landed much on our radar. And then when 2008 came and the whole landscape changed, we started looking around, okay, there's new rules in real estate. Kiyosaki wrote a book called New Rules in Real Estate. Everybody was talking about the new rules in real estate. It's like, what are the new rules? Well, the new rules is markets that maybe weren't that great are now going to be great. And so we spent a lot of time going in and out of Dallas doing field trips and watching what was going on. And it became clear that this was a marketplace that had drivers, not just one driver, not just two drivers, but multiple drivers. It had population, it had education, it had transportation, it had a business-friendly environment, low-income tax, medical, finance, tech, distribution. I mean, it was, it, it was a package. And when you started really looking at it, especially with the energy underpinnings, like this market has really got some room to run. Well, little did we know, it ended up probably being the best real estate market of the last decade. So it was really a lot of fun to watch, but it's it's clearly not over yet. No, it's not. And yet the yields have changed a lot. You know, I remember back on the field trip days, we did a field trip here about every year, right up until it didn't seem to make that much sense anymore. The yields were down, cap rates were compressed, single family houses were harder to come by. And we had seen all that money and those jobs and the people coming into DFW and the surrounding area raised the ability for people to pay. That raised the prices of houses. It raised rents a little bit, but rents aren't rising today as quickly as appreciation is happening. And it's kind of weird to think about Texas as an appreciating state, but it's true in Houston, it's true in Austin, it's true in San Antonio, and it's certainly true in Dallas. So what's an investor to do? Part of the challenge is if I can't just buy a rental home and have it make a ton of sense, then what else is there? So we've got a guest today who's been with us several times, and many people know John Larson as kind of the turnkey single family guy in Dallas. He actually relocated specifically to Dallas for that very reason. But what's happened as the market has changed is he's had to adapt and his company has had to become more nimble and change kind of what they do, but not the big picture of why they do it. So when we come back, you're going to meet our good friend John Larson today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Do you have a self-directed IRA invested in a syndication? Guess what? It's a ticking time bomb. 
Why? Because IRAs get hit with UBIT taxes, even Roth IRAs. Hi, I'm Damian Lupo, and we fixed this problem for you forever. It gets even better because using the eQRP, you can literally get rid of taxes from all of your gains forever and protect your nest egg. The eQRP is the best vehicle to get it done. IRAs can't do it, not even Roth IRAs. You see, UBIT happens whenever any type of IRA invests in anything with debt. Don't worry, even if your IRA is already invested in a deal, we can kill that tax. Our team at Total Control Financial is here to give you control of your retirement money and free you from that deadly IRA tax forever. Want to learn more about the EQRP? Send an email to eqrp at realestateguysradio.com. I'll email you my special report and send you a copy of the QRP book. Paying a 37% UBIT tax is stupid. First step to getting rid of that tax is to send an email to eqrp at realestateguysradio.com today. Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get everything you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2020 Goals Retreat, January 17th to 19th in beautiful Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. This unique weekend has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the thousands of people that have attended. Hear from some of them and find out more at realestateguysradio.com under events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the 2020 Goals Retreat on the third weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com to register. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, today. Hi, this is Mauricio Raul, founder and CEO of Mir Law Group, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program, heard every weekend on this great radio station all the time at realestateguysradio.com. We're in Dallas, Texas, a market that we've loved for a long time, and if you've been around us, you've met this gentleman before from American Real Estate Investments. Let's say hi to John Larson. Hey, John. Thanks for having me on the show again, guys. Always a pleasure. Always good to have you on, and uh, as a fellow podcaster, it's always good to hear what's happening, and uh, this is a market that you strategically picked. So when we first met, you had just come from another part of the country, you had your eyes on Dallas, and you went, wow, this is a great market for a lot of reasons. Now, fast forward all these years, you were absolutely correct. The market's been insanely fabulous. Anybody who bought a house from you guys three years ago, five years ago, right, is doing great. And uh, how, where's the market today? Well, the market's still hotter than ever, I'll tell you that. The issue that we started running into, I would say, as late as 2017, the cap rates on the single family homes just started to really get compressed, right? You can only push rents up so far. And the, the values of the homes kept going up because of the demand, because of the fact that about 150,000 people a year have been moving here for at least the past decade. And then now that the values are going up, the property taxes are also going up as well. And if you're an investor that's looked at the Texas market, you know property taxes are higher than what you'd see. Almost anywhere. Markets. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So our investors come to us for cash flow primarily. I mean, if it's myself or a member of my team that gets on the phone with an investor, we're, we're going through their goals. I mean, 90% of the time, it's I'm looking for cash flow. I'm looking for passive income. Well, and historically, this has been a cash flow market. It's been exactly that market. And, and, and let's cover this real quickly because people hear, well, the cap rates are compressed everywhere and that we're driving yields down and you really can't push the rents. All of that is good news. The reason it's good news is it tells you the market is strong. You don't see cap rate compression in tertiary markets no one's ever heard from. You see it in the top 10 MSAs where everyone wants to be. So it's not a bad thing. But what's a cash flow investor to do? I think last time we had you on the program, uh, you guys were doing some new development. And that was a way to capture a little more yield by controlling more of the process. And it wasn't a buy and hold single family house but it provided the cash, the very cash flow that you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. So the first projects that we got involved in on our debt syndication side, okay? And I know that all of us are really firm believers in syndication. We love those opportunities, right? So what we did first is we targeted South Lake, which is a top 10 wealthiest city in all of the US, yep. right? 
and we partnered with a developer that we've done many other projects with, and we syndicated funds from our investors on the debt side. They came in as the lenders to buy the lot, uh, do the construction of the building, and then it's our job to obviously get that construction completed, get those those units leased, which by the way, our first building, two of the two of the units are already leased, two of the four, before the building's even done and has a past CO, which is gonna happen any day now. But um, that just goes to the strength of the market again. I felt good building new construction office space because it's in such high demand in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Right. And even especially in South Lake. So this is an interesting transition. You have someone that goes, I like Dallas and I'm a single family home investor. But there's not that many folks who start out in single family that stay there. It's kind of like the training wheels for real estate investing. And if you've never invested before, and you're listening to this, nothing wrong with buying a whole bunch of single family houses. I mean, you guys have been in that business a long time. You got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients that have bought single family houses. And if they've hung on to them, they're happy about yeah. it. But at some point, you kind of graduate, right? You get to that next level and people go, well, I'm interested in multifamily or maybe in this case, office. Now, office isn't strong everywhere, but it's super strong in this marketplace. In fact, um, I, you were just telling me about an office deal that you've done recently that wasn't a ground up construction deal. Yeah, that was another, that was one that I got super lucky on. Okay. That was an opportunity where the building was pretty much 80 to 85% occupied already, but the leases were all gross leases. There was no triple net built in, there was no common area maintenance built in. So I saw a lot of value add from just that standpoint alone. Sure. Also, many of the leases were under market value. Okay, and what I found out was it was because the owner had a business that also occupied the building that he sold. So that was like just one less thing that he had use for the building. You know yeah. what I mean? It was just taking up his time. He was self-managing it. And now he didn't have a business that was living out of that building. So he was ready to, to get rid of it. He was a don't want her. Exactly. And so I was able to acquire that building at basically a 9% cap rate, okay, which is unheard of yeah. in the DFW market. And this is in Carrollton. This is in a pretty nice North Dallas suburb, okay? And so we were able to go in and, and, and get that property. And really all it needed, it needed some HVAC work. The tenants were complaining that, you know, the the ducts weren't spliced, you know, correctly. Yep. And so one guy's controlling it, their heat and turning it up when they're when they're hot already. You know what I mean? So we went in, we fixed that. And then we renovated the few vacant units that were there. And then now we're in the process of fully redoing the whole entranceway. It hadn't been remodeled since 2005. So it was it was very dated. And so now we're making it more modern, which will obviously tell the story to the tenants as to why we're going to now in, implement a triple net or a, a cam. And we're also going to start putting the rents up to where they should be, right? And so that was a great, great deal. I was super, super excited to get that one. But you can't find those every day in Dallas-Fort Worth. Right. You know? Well, it does take a little nosing around, and you become pretty good at that. But you do have to look for where the opportunity is. And in this case, you know, every step of the way, as you increase the HVAC, as you increase the rents, you're protecting the investor more. And the same is true for a single-family house. If someone bought a single-family house four years ago from you guys, it's gone up in value. Now, it may not perform today if someone were to buy it at its market price with today's market rent that you would shy away from that deal. But because someone bought it four years ago, the rents have gone up, their basis is the same. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to create cash flow for new investors, this is one of the challenges of a mature market. And that's really, I think, a bigger discussion than just the DFW area is this is an area that provides lots of stuff. There's retail here. There's professional sports teams here. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that happens in a market like this. There's manufacturing, distribution, medical. Mm -hmm. And so rather than just focus on, hey, we're single family home guys, it's more about where is the the opportunity. And I think syndication brings up an interesting point because for many people, they have to make this overarching decision as an investor. Am I going to be a hands-on active investor and I'm going to qualify for the properties and I'm going to manage the properties or, or I'm going to paint the property myself, right? Or am I more geared to be a passive investor where I'm going to find someone who is doing the kind of deals that make sense in a market that makes sense but I'm not going to get involved. I'm not getting my hands dirty. And it's not a right or wrong answer. And over the years, you guys have certainly appealed to both types of investors. No, yeah, absolutely. And primarily everybody that comes to me, they're they're looking for passive, right? And and what I, I explain to investors too is even though you have a property management team that's looking after your asset, you know, with single family homes, there can still be some bumps and bruises on the way. There could be a vacancy, there could be an eviction, you know, even in the Dallas market where it's it's hot as a pistol and there's so many new people moving here, 
you know, there's still a chance that your property sits vacant for a month or two and you're not generating income at that point. And so, you know, what I've noticed with the debt syndication is for my people that really want hands off or very hands off experience and want as high as a return as possible, you know, where you're getting in the double digits on the debt side in a market in it in a market like Dallas, where that asset is backed in, in the Dallas Fort Worth market. Right. A lot of times, I mean, there's just it's, it's almost a no brainer. But like I said, it gets back to the deal flow. And I'm in a position right now where I have more investors that are trying to loan me money than I have actual projects. So I'm in a pretty tough pickle right now. But uh, I, I really, especially from the IRA 401k uh, investor who's looking to lend money from the IRA or 401k, I mean, the debt syndication model or even an equity syndication model, I mean, there's still, it's, it's, it's such a great passive experience for them and a great way to maximize their retirement account, right? You know, so many people don't even understand that they can put their retirement dollars to work. And uh, we've been beating that drum for years. And still we get people to go, I didn't know you could do that. And that's usually someone that works for a company that has a plan and a program and you check a box and you're off to the races. You don't think about it much. But as soon as you can self-direct your retirement funds, it opens up a whole world of alternative investments. But you got to, of course, follow the rules. And all of that's beyond the the topic of uh, today, but that is a great resource that people have. And because of the nature of a retirement account, you can't have a current benefit. It is really for tomorrow, not for today. Then these passive investments make a lot more sense. Yeah, they absolutely do. You know, and even with the stock market, you know, keeping your money in traditional investments, you see how now the stock market's kind of going up and down. And I can tell people are getting a little nervous, but yeah, it's all about us leading the charge, educating people, right? If I just sit with the everyday person, they don't even understand that they can self-direct their funds. You know, they don't even understand that they could lend money or on a real estate project or on equipment for a business or whatever it may be. There's a lot of things and also hold first lien position on that asset, just like any bank would, right? Which really minimizes your risk as well. But when I get on the phone with somebody and I educate them that that's an opportunity, it really almost becomes a no-brainer to them. Well, if you think about what uh, the ways we can invest in real estate, so you mentioned you know, a debt syndication or an equity syndication. It's like that even in a, a passive investment. I could be a lender. I could decide to either carry the loan on a property I own when I sell it rather than have a bank loan come in. Hey, I know the asset. I know the collateral. I'll carry if what I'm after is that cash flow and not the big chunk of money. Or... I could be an equity investor and buy a property or buy a part of a property or a tenant in common interest or some equipment that I lease back. A lot of ways you can invest. And it really depends on what those funds are and how your personal investment philosophy fits in. A debt investor is someone that wants a predictable income flow. And again, with a lot of the deals you guys are doing, these have been double digit returns, which is great, but they're also not risky double digit returns in that usually to get to double digits, you have to go to a tertiary market or you have to take on more risk. These are solid deals in solid marketplaces. And people have a hard time getting their mind around why would someone want to use debt. But there's some reasons for that. A, a key one I think we'll talk about before we're done today, one of the recent deals you guys have done where the asset actually pays back so quickly that there's not a lot of risk on either side. But if I'm a, a debt investor, then I'm after this predictable flow of return. And a lot of people think that way. Equity investors play differently, right? They're betting on the come. They don't necessarily get cash flow as soon, but it might be more over time. And again, not right or wrong. This is a big part you got to think about. I know when you talk to folks who are interested, um, you got to first find out what they're interested in because that's going to determine what type of investments are best for them. Exactly. And there are some people that I get on the phone with where you know, equity syndications make much more sense to them. They want to capture the tax benefits as well. Yeah. Whereas, so if they're investing cash, right, with the IRA, yes, the dividends are going back to them tax-free or tax-deferred, right? But if you're investing with cash and you're in that 40% tax bracket, you're going to be paying some money back to the IRS, you know, up to 40%, right, on the money that you made on your interest payments. Now, some of the deals that we've been able to offer were as high as 12%. So even after you're paying your taxes, you're still making an 8% return, which is pretty solid and, and they feel comfortable with that. But you know, when, you, when you're when you talking to somebody that's just at higher net worth, sometimes the tax advantages are a little bit more appealing to them. You know, it just really comes down to their goals and what they're looking for. But I will say on the debt side, the majority of the investors that are coming over on the debt side, I would say majority, 65%, somewhere around there, are probably all 
self-directed retirement account investors, right? Because at that point, like I said, dividends are going back tax-free, tax-deferred. So they're capturing some tax savings, right, on the money, and they're bringing back double-digit returns into their retirement account, where with traditional investments, you're not really seeing that, right. you know, as we know. Yeah, and I think one of the uh, things you consider when you're looking at your retirement funds is just how soon until you need that money. If I'm not going to need that money for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, then I can think differently about it. I don't necessarily need monthly cash flow from my IRA investment, but if I were going to put cash into a deal that was making 12% and have to pay that tax, all of a sudden it might look better if I put that in an IRA because now I don't have that tax today. Depends obviously whether it's a Roth IRA or traditional IRA or how it's structured, but either way it's tax favored. And so it lets you have that one more level of consideration with an investment is the tax side. On the equity investment side with syndications, then you often can share in the tax benefits of owning real estate. So sometimes those flow through to the investor and that can be, you know, what uh, what the person's interested in. So it is definite that you get your mind around. But I think what, what I'd like people to be able to do today is expand their thinking a little bit. I've watched you go through this. When we met, you were the single family turnkey home guy. Exactly. You guys are great at it. You know the market. You're great at getting the units rehabbed in a cost-effective but very tenant-friendly way, great management solution, and you still have all that. It's just harder to get inventory that makes sense in this marketplace. And you guys are in a couple of other marketplaces as well. But when we talk about Dallas-Fort Worth and we look around here, you can see why there is so much going on. So rather than just think, okay, I, I was buying a, a rental house because I wanted cash flow. If you just expand your thinking to say, would I take the cash flow independent of owning the rental house? And if the answer is yes, then there's lots of other things you could invest in. Yeah, exactly. And that's a good point that you just brought up too. So even though we've kind of repositioned, I would say, into doing debt syndications and going after commercial property and maybe retail, you know, because retail is very strong in DFW too. I'm just not as familiar with retail right now. So I'm not going to put my investors in something that I don't feel fully confident in. But, you know, office buildings are pretty easy to understand as well pretty easy to manage. And what that has done is it's helped grow my management company from just a single family management company to now multifamily and also commercial. And the goal is to pay back the investor in a number of ways. We could sell the sell the opportunity to another investor, another group for a buy and hold and pay the investors back that way. Or what I really like to do is go back and get bank financing get the refi done, pay them back from the proceeds of the refi, and now hold a 30,000 square foot office building in North Dallas for four plexes, so 16 units that now my management company manages for me. And now we're reaping the benefits of the cash flow. So it's a really, it's honestly, I believe it's a great model, but like you said, you know, with tertiary markets, you're running into a little bit more risk. Like how much demand is there for office space in, in tertiary markets? Whereas with DFW, it's kind of a no-brainer. Same thing on the multifamily side. You know, apartments are hot as a pistol out here too. Everybody's doing apartments, right? Yep. Like like Brad Sumrock, right? I mean, he's killing it with apartments. So you know, I, I just saw that opportunity. I felt like we needed to kind of grow and graduate and expand. And really, it was primarily one, hey, I got to kind of keep the lights on myself. So you have to kind of reposition. But also, I'm always looking at what's best for the investor too. Such a good point. Now, today, you don't have an offering on the table. So we're not here to talk about something you're raising money for. But you've done quite a few of these debt offerings. What typically is the timeline for this? If someone's thinking, I'm going to put my money to work, are these long-term, short-term? What would your typical deal maybe look like? Um, the longest term we've done thus far was on the new construction buildings. Obviously, they're going to take a little bit longer, right? Um, so that was an 18-month term. But primarily, what we're really looking at is about year, year terms. We want to get your money back within a year. And then obviously, it's it's going to put some pressure on me to have another deal lined up for you because I want to keep your money working for you, right? Yep. But I also want to prove out. And I think, especially just starting off, you know, year 18-month terms are good because a lot of investors are just like, hey, John, you know, you are the single family guy and now you're getting in this debt syndication thing. How do I know you really know what you're doing almost, right? And I get it. So that's why it's, I, I like to look for like the shorter term deals for now until we start proving out, paying back investors. And then at that point, we could maybe start looking at deals with a two, three year, up to five year plan. But for now, one year, 18 months, that's primarily what we're targeting. We're down with John Larson. We're in Dallas, Texas. We've got more discussion and a chance to play real estate trivia next. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. 
Live nationwide, you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Hey, it's Robert Helms. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. I want to personally invite you to come see an amazing real estate market that combines excellent cash flow, offshore diversification, and what we affectionately call lifestyle investing. Come join me from November 15th to 18th in the beautiful country of Belize. The Real Estate Guys have been bringing investors to Belize for more than 14 years now, and our discovery trip is designed to show you the market like nobody else can. Sure, Belize is breathtakingly beautiful. The people are wonderful, and wait till you taste the food. But the real opportunity is the real estate investment potential. 2018 was the biggest year in tourism Belize has ever witnessed, and this year is coming on strong. How does that translate to real estate investment? That's what you have to come see. There's all types of opportunity in Belize, including both long and short-term rentals, commercial and retail triple net properties, business opportunities, land acquisition, development, agriculture, and more. And as the only country in Latin America with English as its official language, it's easy to understand the law. Property rights are strong and contracts are in English. And in Ambergris Key, a unique situation exists where demand for rentals continues to outstrip supply, creating a compelling environment for investors. So come see for yourself. Join me November 15th through 18th in Ambergris Key, Belize, as we study the market, learn about the sustainable drivers, and tour lots of beautiful real estate. And like all of our field trips, there are no properties for sale during the weekend. Rather, you'll meet lots of local providers that will help educate you about the market so that you can follow up with them after the trip if the market is interesting to you. But that ball's in your court. You'll receive their contact details, but they won't receive yours unless you give it to them. You've heard about Believes in the Real Estate Guys for all these years. Now come see what all the excitement is about. Plus, we'll have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. To get the details, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on events where you'll find the Belize Discovery Trip. Once you register, you'll get information about our group hotel rates as well as travel details. So join me in Belize, November 15th through 18th. It's a beautiful country with lots of amazing possibilities and the only thing missing is you. Go to realestateguysradio.com under events. I look forward to seeing you in beautiful Belize. Hi, this is Kendra Todd, winner of The Apprentice, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. If you aren't yet experiencing the success you want in your life and you aren't clear about where you're going, then come on out to create your future. Our annual goals retreat happens the third weekend in the new year in beautiful Lake Las Vegas. It'll help you identify exactly what you want out of life and why, and then give you the tools you need to design the life you want. All the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com. Under events, just look for Create Your Future. We're talking with John Larson today about Dallas, Texas, and some different types of investments you might consider if you're in search of yield. Before we get back to that conversation, it's time to play Real Estate Trivia. Your chance to win a prize by knowing today's Real Estate Trivia question. In just a minute, I'm going to ask you something about the great state of Texas. When you hear the question and think you know the answer, send your best guess to Trivia at realestateguysradio.com trivia at realestateguysradio.com includes your name the answer to the question and your mailing address because if you're the winner we're going to send you an amazing book called purpose passion and profit a compilation of great stories by our friend kyle wilson and 40 different authors that can be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question last week it was ask the guys and we asked this california is known as the golden state but what was it previously called? Well, California was once known as the Bear State, and it became known as the Golden State after its grizzly bear population was wiped out. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. Speaking of states, we're in Texas today. Name the official state mammal of Texas. Yeah, which mammal is the official mammal of the state of Texas? Could be lots of different things, but if you think you know, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com trivia at realestateguysradio.com includes your name, your guess, and your mailing address because if you're the first person with the right answer we're going to send you this awesome book Purpose, Passion, and Profit 
That's today's real estate trivia question. We're talking with John Larson from American Real Estate Investments. And speaking of books, you've got a great book out. And before we're done, we're going to tell the listeners how they can get two free chapters. Now, let's talk about what the two free chapters of your book are and specifically why you've chosen those. Yeah, so the book is is basically, it, it talks about how to get started in earning passive income in, in real estate. And so the chapters that I selected, um, we've kind of already talked about it, you know, what private lending is, what debt syndications are, but I had a chapter just dedicated to that. So we're giving that away for free. And then also, um, I, I wanted to talk more about the benefits of self-directing your retirement account, how to do that. Um, so we're also giving that chapter away also because I believe they kind of play hand in hand. Yeah, good stuff. Well, and when you think about those two things, being a private lender, lending money instead of putting it in on an equity basis. So either that or I have money in my IRA. I want to put it to work. We're obviously a real estate show. We're both real estate guys. We love real estate, but real estate isn't the only investment out there. You know, at our syndication class, we uh, do that a couple times a year and we tell folks syndication isn't just real estate. It is a way, a mechanism that a lot of big real estate deals happen. Most multi-million dollar deals are done in syndications. Lots of people carry the weight. But a syndicate, I mean, all major motion pictures are syndicated. You can syndicate a business. Mm -hmm. You can syndicate all kinds of things. And the same is true when it comes to being a private lender. You know, we have a, a business where we took some private lending in on some commercial equipment. And I know this is something that you've done and are continuing to do. Now, you might not think, well, that's real estate. But if it accomplishes the same thing, you have a lien on the equipment, you have a right to the equipment if the loan doesn't get paid. Talk about that. Yeah, and actually that's a raise that we did earlier this year was on uh, two large pieces of equipment that are used for a very burgeoning space uh, right now that I'm sure many people have, have kind of inquired about and have probably seen in the news and things like that. But equipment that is used to extract hemp. And the market for that right now, ever since the farm bill was passed in December, if people are familiar with all those changes that happened, what it did is it took hemp off the banned substance list, okay, and it made it legal for farmers to grow hemp all over the U.S. And there's tons of uses for hemp, by the way. I mean, exactly. tons of uses for it. But it's why it is a lesser grown crop because of the limitations. That's all about to change. And it's created this opportunity. Sure, there might be farming opportunity in it, but the opportunity you guys have focused on is the processing equipment. Exactly. And what we discovered was with the passing of the farm bill, there was going to be a, a huge amount, more than there ever has been, of hemp biomass on the market. And for all of you who are listening to the show that maybe have been researching CBD products or have been using them, well, to, to get a CBD product, the, the plant has to go through an extraction process, yeah. okay? And so what we saw is the equipment on that side is not cheap. And a lot of it comes from overseas and from other manufacturers overseas. So it's, it's, it's not easy for just anybody to jump into this space. Right. And so I'm looking at the opportunity of, okay, there's going to be a large, larger amount, the largest amount ever, hemp, on the market. There's obviously more and more consumer demand on the retail side for these products but there's not going to be enough guys that get set up with that extraction solution. Right, and, well, because think about this. It's relatively simple to go figure out how to grow 50 acres of, of hemp. I mean, that's not a, an easy thing. Farming is a whole thing, but it's easier than to come up with millions of dollars and the intellectual property necessary to run this type of equipment. Exactly. So let me just give you an idea of what the going rate is for an extraction service. It's anywhere from on the low end, $20, but I don't think that we'll see that price going into this year's harvest. I think you're going to really see more like 23 to 25 per pound. Per pound. Per pound. Okay, so to raise, let's say, $3 million. Is that, is that per pound of the in substance or of the input substance? Input. Input wow. pounds. Wow. Okay. okay. So, but the it's such a lucrative business right now because of the retail demand that's out there for these products that people are willing to pay it. Farmers are willing to pay it. Groups that have a large retail brands are willing to pay for that extraction service because they're making so much money on the back end selling retail, right? right? So with that service, though, you know, let's raise $3 million to buy three machines just to make numbers simple. Yep. Well, 100,000 pounds of hemp at $25 a pound, 
do the math. You know what I'm saying? You're really almost there to, to the you point You pay your where machine back pretty fast. Exactly. So the opportunity that you guys have found is to loan money, be in first position, and there's a way that you can collateralize equipment, right, through a UCC1 filing, which is exactly what we did in our equipment. Yep. And that way you're the investor is protected. But the real upside is that it pays back relatively quickly because of the very nature of the equipment provides the return. The, the main reason I like these opportunities as well is predictable cash flow. Yeah. Okay. With real estate deals, you know, things can get wonky from time to time, right? But with this opportunity right now, the writing's on the wall. Anybody that's done their research, I mean, you could just simply Google, you know, CBD industry and see all of the crazy things and crazy opportunities that there are out there um, for investors or entrepreneurs um, that want to get into this space. But like I said, you know, loaning on something that you hold lean to, right? And this is this is heavy machinery, and you hold lean to it. And obviously, the sponsor or the borrower is going to want to pay you back because they don't want you to come take their machines or make right. you shut them down. There's right. too much money to be made, right? But like I said, it's predictable cash flow where we can show on paper, this is what this machine is going to be able to do during this next six-month harvest, whatever it may, may be. And you'll see that the money that's going to be generated compared to the loan is just so much far greater, you know, that it's, I believe it's a win-win for everybody. Well, and here's what I like about it is independent of its machinery and its CBD and all that is that it's just an alternative investment, a different way to approach the challenge, which is creating the yields. And like, for instance, let's talk about this recent real estate deal that you guys did. You found some fourplexes in this marketplace, which are hard to find, but rather than just offer them to individual investors, it made better sense to do it as a, as a syndication. And you bought what, 16 units. Yep. You already have management in place. That's part of what you guys do anyway. And on the backside of that deal, perhaps that creates some individual inventory. I mean, a lot of different ways you can go. And that's not a place that mom and pop are going to play. They're not going to be able to come and buy four fourplexes. Talk about that deal. Right, exactly. And so that's kind of why we did that. Um, that's why I wanted to syndicate and buy all four, because that gave me the opportunity to kind of come in and get a deal. If I would have bought them individually, I wouldn't have been able to negotiate the deal that I did by buying all 16 units at once. So that's where we came in on the debt side. So those are little tricks that I that you have to do as an investor looking for opportunities, right? You know, the everyday person maybe could only afford to buy one, but then they're buying at a much lower cap rate than I would have purchase by buying all 16 at one time. So that was the goal going into that. And then we also raised the capital to do the renovation, right? Because yep. we're going to go in and we're going to redo all the units. All the units needed to be redone. We're going to put granite in. We're going to make them really nice and push the rents up to where they should be in that market. And even still at that price, I believe we're going to be slightly below market compared to what two bedroom, two bath apartments are going for in the area, okay? So they they should lease very quickly. And then now when you have four units that are bringing in $1,350 a month, now we can then sell or, or maybe possibly refinance them and hold them, but at least sell them to our investor community that I've been taking calls for years. John, I want multifamily in DFW. Right. We don't have it. Now I'm about to have four. Yeah. So come and get them when they're done, you know? But that was that was the idea. Get a deal by buying all four by doing the debt syndication. Raise the rehab, okay? And I'm putting $100,000 per building in there. So just yeah. call it twenty five k per unit, right? And we're also redoing the outsides, making them more appealing and making them nicer and, and all that. And then so when they're done, I have some debt on them, yes, but by bringing up the rents to where I know they should be, it's a no-brainer. And these things are spinning off really, really solid yields for a market like Dallas-Fort Worth. Well, when you have such strong demand, a play like that makes sense. Plus the fact that this allows you to take advantage of the better rents in the marketplace. It will be hard to find just the one-off deal to go do that. But by finding something where there's work to be done, but it's not so much work that you're you know, afraid of doing it uh, and that you've got the management solution in place makes a ton of sense. But I hope what the listeners are getting is that there's lots of ways to approach that. It would have been easier for you to say, hey, look, these four deals are pretty good. we got a big you know, database. We'll see if there's four people that want to buy them. Now, independently, they each have to figure out how to do the rehab and you're managing it for them and some are increased and some have granite and some don't. Instead, this raises up the whole neighborhood. So so good stuff. Well, we could go on and on and on, but uh, I know uh, before you're done, we're going to uh, tell folks how they can get a copy of these two chapters of the book, but also uh, you've done uh, kind of an update on your report on the marketplace. So tell us what's in the uh, DFW report. 
Yeah, we we put out new reports every year. Pretty much right now at this point, I'm primarily focusing on DFW. I mean, it's my home at this point. I've lived here for five years. I really believe in the market. I think it is truly the best, if not one of the best markets in America for the obvious reasons that we just went over. So, you know, you're going to hear about the population growth over the past number of years that we've been in Dallas-Fort Worth, but also projections on growth. Um, you know, we, we highlight some new development opportunities that are going on in DFW, really tell the story of just how great things are and really, you know, how much demand there is for commercial retail space, single family homes, multifamily. I mean, it is there. I mean, it's so telling in the report. So there's a lot, a lot of good information in there. And if you're somebody that's looking for a lower risk investment and trying to get in one of these, I call them blue chip markets, yep. okay, to minimize risk, then check out the report. Take a glance at it. If you don't know much that much about DFW after reading the report, you're going to feel really good about what you're reading. All right. If you'd like information on the DFW market and two free chapters of John's book, just send an email to DFW at realestateguysradio.com, DFW at realestateguysradio.com. And like magic, out that will come. Hey, John, always great catching up. Thanks for being on the program today. Thank you so much for having me. This is our friend John Larson from American Real Estate Investments. More when we come back. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real Estate Investment Advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. The Real Estate Guys are throwing a party and you're invited. Join us at the New Orleans Investment Conference, November 1st through 4th. Now in its 45th year, it's the nation's longest running investment conference and features some of the biggest names in economics and investing, including Doug Casey, Dennis Gartman, Rick Rule, and Peter Schiff. The Real Estate Guys are speaking in multiple sessions, attending lots of others, and we're hosting a hospitality suite one of the evenings for our friends and listeners, including some VIPs for you to mingle with. So make plans today to join the Real Estate Guys at the New Orleans Investment Conference. With everything going on in the world, no serious investor can afford to miss it. For all the details, send an email to New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com and it will tell you how to get upgraded tickets and join the party. That's New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com and we'll see you in New Orleans. Hey, this is Gene from the Residential Assisted Living Academy. Making money, cash flow is important. Doing it for the right reasons with a heart is even more important. If you'd like to learn more about turning a single family home into a cash flow machine, earning five, 10, 15,000 net or more per month, well, I'd like to share that with you. Our motto is do good and do well. There is a silver tsunami of seniors coming and you have a huge opportunity. Take advantage of it. To gain access to an informational webinar presented by certified financial planner and real estate entrepreneur Gene Garino and discover how you can turn a nice home in a nice neighborhood into a cash flow machine, send an email to ALF, A-L-F, at realestateguysradio.com. That's A-L-F at realestateguysradio.com. Forbes rated Memphis the best cash flow market in the nation. And our good friend Terry Kerr at Mid-South Home Buyers has been the premier turnkey rental property provider in Memphis for over 13 years. With an A-plus rating for the Better Business Bureau, Terry has renovated over 750 houses. Real Estate Guys listeners have snapped up hundreds. Discover what these satisfied investors already know. Mid-South's properties are completely renovated with a one-year warranty and a lifelong rental guarantee. They're affordable, well-managed, and easy to own. Perfect for beginning investors and veterans alike. Get in on the action. Contact Terry and his team via email at midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Tom Wheelwright, best-selling author of Tax-Free Wealth, and you're listening to Real Estate Guys Radio. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys Radio program this week in Dallas, Texas. Hey, speaking of Dallas, if you've ever wanted to raise money to do bigger deals, then come on out to the secrets of successful syndication. We'll be back here in Dallas-Fort Worth in September, last weekend in September, and tickets are still available. So get to the website at realestateguysradio.com under events. My goodness, all kinds of stuff going on with John Larson. Yeah, it's really a testimony to real estate entrepreneurism. And I think any investor and certainly any entrepreneur, especially real estate entrepreneur, you've got to take what the market gives you. And, you know, some people change markets and that's perfectly legit. You can say, hey, I'm a cash flow investor and I'm looking for the best possible cash flows. This market has changed. Uh, and it's not just Dallas. I mean, it's a lot of markets that have changed uh, because so much money has come into real estate. And I think 
even more money is going to be coming into real estate. Of course, lower interest rates on mortgages fuel some of that. And that gap, incomes can't keep up, rents can't keep up, and it becomes harder and harder for a landlord to find deals that'll pencil, even with the cheaper mortgages. So when you look at that and say, okay, well, I've got to adjust to what the market is giving me. I, I To me, that's what I see John and his team doing. They look at the market. They're very focused on their investors and what their investors are coming to them for. And they're saying, hey, you know what? We've been doing this turnkey property thing for a while. And for a while, it was a great way to generate cash flow. It's become harder and harder to do that and the deals are fewer and farther between, how can we better serve our investors? And you look around and say, what does this market need? Because I don't want to leave the market. The market's still great, but I, I got I to gotta find something that the market needs that the market will give me that will meet the needs of my investors. And I've watched John do that and it's working. And that's that's exciting. It's exciting to watch the metamorphosis. Well, the market is strong, continues to be strong. In fact, that's one of the reasons that John's had to kind of go outside the box a little bit. So if you're interested in Dallas, in fact, they still have access to single family homes and resales from investors that have been in the market a while. But also if you're interested in some of these alternative investments, whether it's, you know, equipment or loans that are backed by real estate, and you want to learn about the market, plus get two free chapters in John's book, just send an email to dfw at realestateguysradio.com, dfw at realestateguysradio.com. I think the other lesson about it is just the point of being nimble. When you're in a market, we often say you get married to a market in real estate, especially for buy and hold investors. It doesn't mean that you have to keep doing the same exact thing you've always done. Getting married to the market is about understanding the nuances, creating relationships, having a deep team of providers, and those things can aid you when the market changes and you decide to go in a different direction. Just take, for example, the typical person who's a, a single family home investor, and at some point they decide, you know, I'd like to get the efficiencies and economies of scale to be a multifamily investor. Well, maybe they're already in some markets that make sense. And rather than look for a different market for a different product type, you might start close to home. And so I think those lessons are great lessons no matter what market you're in. Well, I think, you know, when you look at what you're doing, yes, you're doing deals and deals are important, but they're components of a bigger picture called your portfolio. And your portfolio probably should be made up of different types of products, different types of markets, different types of exposures, and it's going to have different components that are designed to do different things. When you step into the debt position, when you're a lender and you're investing in debt, you still want to have great collateral. That's why you know a market like DFW that's really got strong economic underpinnings and uh, asset prices that I think have proven to be uh, pretty rugged, uh, even in the face of any type of a downturn. Uh, clearly, that was the case in 2008. You know, you want to make sure you have good collateral. But when you look at what you're trying to do in your portfolio, it's like, you know what, I need a piece of my portfolio to generate uh, better yields. And when you have compressed cap rates, you may have to step from the ownership or the equity side over to the debt side to do that. And, and that can be okay too, because along with that comes some benefits. And those benefits are, you know, now all of a sudden you're in front of the equity. So if the market turns down, doesn't get on you. Uh, you don't really have cash calls. There is the potential that you would have to foreclose or take back the asset, which is why you want great collateral. But that's further on down the path. There's, there's a big buffer between you and some of those negative ramifications and that's called the borrower. And so it can make a lot of sense to have some of that in your in your portfolio. Of course, you give up the depreciation schedule and some of the growth, but you can go elsewhere in your portfolio into different markets, different product types to achieve that. So to me, this is just great because John is bringing more tools to the investor's toolbox so people can find ways to create better cash flows without some of the inherent risk and responsibilities that come with being a landlord or directly owning the property. And they can they can put in some of the other pieces of that in different parts of their portfolio. So um, I, I, I like what he's doing. I think it makes a lot of sense for folks. We first got enamored of the Dallas-Fort Worth market many, many years back. I'd say we're still big fans. So big thanks to John Larson for sharing his time and his expertise with us. If you want more information about the market and a couple of chapters in John's book, just send an email to DFW at realestateguysradio.com. Speaking of markets we like, there's a place we go every year, which is so much fun. And we're going again to the New Orleans Investment Conference. It's the 45th year of this conference, the longest running investment conference in the United States. It's in New Orleans, which is 
an amazing market in terms of fun and food and story and maybe even real estate, but definitely make plans to head on out to the New Orleans Investment Conference with the real estate guys. Yeah, when you do, we're going to throw a party. We always do a sweet party in New Orleans. So for our listeners, so if you want to join us, just send an email to New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com. We'll get you information on how you can register for the conference and RSVP for our party. We'll introduce you to some of our friends, hang out and have a good time. But I think that if there's a year to go, this is going to be a good year to be at the New Orleans Investment Conference. Gold, precious metals in particular, have outperformed on an appreciation basis stocks. Uh, and so there's a lot of reasons to think that trend may continue. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in the world. I think this is going to be one of the more informative and energized conferences as far as the New Orleans Investment Conference goes uh, that we've been to in a number of years. I'm really, really looking forward to it. A lot of awesome speakers, a lot to learn, and it's not all real estate, although you'll find a great deal of uh, real estate outcomes there. You'll meet a lot of the real estate guys, tribe, but you'll also learn about precious metals, oil and gas, junior mining, alternative investments. All you have to do to get the details about the conference and our VIP Real Estate Guys Suite Party is just send an email to New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com. That does it for this week. Until next week, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid South Home Buyers, low cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888 489 7723 Extension 4. That's 888 888- 489-7723 extension 4 or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com thanks for listening and we'll see you next week right here on the real estate guys radio show